הקדוש בוקר טוב, שבוע טוב, מסכת יבמות, דף ל"ד עמוד א', 34A1. says the Gemara, we just proved that when it said הוחלפו, which means that the wives were changed, right, obviously we were meaning that it was not done, right, במזיד. Because if it was done by Mezid, obviously they wouldn't be able to go back with their original husband. So obviously that was what you just need a proof. And when it said Ukhrefu, it was obviously Bishogeg. And that was the truth. That it was obviously done Bishogeg. Okay? Now the Gemara says, on the top, 341 on the top. Uman haitana de itle isur kolel isur mosif isur batachat. Which means, we were just talking about that a person with one relations he could be over four different Isurim. Four different Isurim. Isur number one, Eshet Ish. Number two, Eshet Ach, the brother's wife. Number three, Achot Isha, with his, sister, his wife's sister. And number four, Anida. So who's the one, right? Because according to the Shita of Rabbi Chia, the Kavanah is he's going to be Chayav the Korbanot, just like the Isurim. So remember you said there's either going to be four per person. So it's 16 Korbanot. Right, because every single one of the four people, right, it's going to be 16 korbanot. Remember, there were two brothers. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Basically, the question that we're asking now is, is that even though any sur chalal isur, one isur does not fall on another isur, our Mishnah is saying that the isurim chal on one another. So therefore, a person would be chayav four chatao for the same woman. So for example, Ruben comes and he does kiddushin to Rachel, he becomes prohibited. Right? That moment she becomes prohibited to Shimon the brother because of Eshet Ish and Eshet Ach. So that's Isur Bebat Achat. Then Shimon comes and gets married to Leah, the sister of Rachel. So the second that he gets married, right, now that also becomes Achot Isha, right? And it also becomes, right, now, okay, now obviously until now we're talking about the Isur Kolel of an Eshet Ish beforehand as well. And now he comes and he says that if she just saw became a Nida, so then the Chali Isur of Nida, which is also Nidu Isur Mosif, but was, Nida is adding on. But remember, somebody lives with Nida, is Chayav Karet. Yeah, because of Nida. Okay? So answers the Gemara. Ama Rabbi Yehuda Marav says of you the name of Rav. Rabbi Meir, he, Chitat Rabbi Meir. The Trambas, we learned to the Nishnan Kritut. Yesh Ochel Achila Achat, Vechayav Aleha Arba Chataot Vasham Echad. Some person could come and he could eat accidentally. One time. That means he's going to eat once accidentally. Right? And what's going to happen is one kezait, that means, and he's going to be chayav on the one kezait, four chataot, and one asham. Four sin offerings, and one guilt offering. How, what, what does that mean? A person's going to eat one kezait, and he gets five korbanot? What's going on? So he says, you know how it is. Tameh shachal chelev. If a person's impure, he's tameh, and he ate chelev. Remember, chelev is prohibited fats of the animal. When you have the animal, usually they do mikur. Mikur is that the shochet afterwards he comes and they clean out the animals from the primitive fats. Okay? Vehu notar min mukdashin. Now, not only is it going to be chelev from the primitive animals, right? Which is sorry, which is the primitive fats of an of a kosher animal. Also, it's leftovers from the mukdashin, which means it was a korban. And what happened was it became notar. And when did he eat it? On Kippur. So imagine this guy ate chelev, right? He ate. Notar, it was from the Korbanot and Yom Kippur. Now, what does that mean? Bishogeg is going to be over on four, uh, four Isurim. Why? Because if he did it purposely, he would be Chayav Karet. But what did he do? He ate Chelef, primitive fats. Notar is leftovers. Kippur, he ate Kochim, which is the consecrated animals. And he ate when he was Tameh. That's five different Averot. Five and one. Yeah, five for one. It's cheap. No, five for one. Yeah. Five for one, that's what happens. So therefore, he has to bring four chataot. And the fifth one, right, he also, which en chayavim al zinol karet, is meila from Hekdesh. He benefited from Hekdesh. So in benefiting from Hekdesh, right, he says over here, um, he says over here, is korban Hashem. It's going to be a guilt offer. Rabbi Meir Omer, Rabbi Meir says, im ha'ita b'shabbat, what happens if he ate this on Shabbat? Ve'el tzio b'fiv, and he took it out of his mouth, Right from the shuta yechid to the shuta rabim, and then he swallowed it. That means he also carried. So then he's going to be chayav an extra one for the Shabbat. So Abrulo, they went and they said no, but Enomin Hashem, the Shabbat is not the same as everything else. 
Everything else was because of the Yisur of Achila. You're eating. You're not allowed to eat on Kippur. You're not allowed to eat Notar, leftovers. You're not allowed to eat Kochi. You're not allowed to eat when you're Tameh. You're not, all of it is the form of eating. Here, it's transferring. It's, it's carrying. It's not the same name. So because it's not the same name, they didn't want to bring this down. You know, as they said, it has nothing to do with, like I could also say, and he did, I don't know what, but it's not connected. So because of that, they do not want to come. So now says the Gemara, Rabbi Meir, Aliba Deman. So according to Rabbi Meir, that he says that these people are going to be chayav korbanot chataat. Who's he going like? I Aliba de Rabbi Yoshua. If you're going to tell me that it's going according to Rabbi Yoshua, Hamar Rabbi Yoshua says Tabid var mitzvah patur. If a person made a mistake while doing a mitzvah, he's going to be patur, even if he did not do the mitzvah. So therefore, Ela but rather, Aliba de Rabbi Yezer. It has to be going according to Rabbi Yezer that he says that if you were ta'abid var mitzvah and he didn't do a mitzvah, you're going to be chayav achatat. So therefore, it has to be going according to Rabbi Yezer. Now that we already said that the Mishnah is going according to Rabbi Meir, there's another machloket now. Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Yoshua, they have a machloket what happens if a person's tabid var mitzvah? Right. Meaning you thought that you were doing a mitzvah, right? So you come and you want to do a mitzvah and then you made a mistake and you didn't do the mitzvah. And now not only did you not do a mitzvah, but you did an avira. Okay, so now the question is going to be, are you obligated to bring a korban chatat? Yes or not? So here also in our Mishnah, what was the case of our Mishnah? They switched the women accidentally when, when they were taking them in for the chuppah. So therefore, they wanted to do a mitzvah of getting married. And therefore, what happens is at the end, they actually did get married, but to the wrong wife. So therefore, they went with the Yeshetish and they went with the brother's sister, the, the, the brother's wife and the sister's, uh, and, the, and the wife's sister. He said that means they did all these Averot. So therefore, it was Ta'abi Dvar Mitzvah. Right? Remember, what was the case? The case of our Mishnah was, is that two brothers came and they gave two Kiddushins to two sisters. And all of a sudden, when they brought them into the chuppah to get married in the chuppah, now they're going to have relations, they got switched, right? And now they had the relations, and now it was the wrong woman. So now the problem is, one second, but they were already married, right? So now here, they were to'eh bitvar mitzvah. They made a mistake in doing a mitzvah. I don't know what happens to the So kid. therefore, yeah, so therefore, the question now is, is that, who's he going like, right? He says, if he's going to go into Yoshua, he says, ta bitvar mitzvah, it's going to be patur from chatat. So obviously, Rabbi Meir, if he's coming and he's saying that you're going to be chayav so many chataot, it's not going like Rabbi Yoshua, but rather has to be going according to Rabbi Yezid. And Rabbi Yezid says, Ta'abidwar mitzvah, the person made a mistake when trying to do a mitzvah, he's still going to be chayav if he didn't do the mitzvah. So another explanation, if you want, you could also answer, Rabbi Yoshua. Really, by man, we could go according to Rabbi Yoshua, but it's the like Rabbi Yoshua. The like Rabbi Yoshua, that if a person went and he was Ta'abidwar mitzvah, he's patur from chatat. He doesn't bring a chatat. Because he made a mistake by trying to do a mitzvah. So since he was trying to do a mitzvah, he does, he's exempt from reading the Qurban. When does Rabbi Yoshua say that if a person made a mistake by the bar mitzvah, that he's going to be patur? That's only to do with the brit milah of a tinok, of a child. Right? That a person is trying to do the mitzvah on the eighth day. Right? And therefore, he comes and he says that even though you could have done it after the eighth day, but there's a special mitzvah to do bizmana, right? And then afterwards, if not, you would lose that mitzvah. So therefore, if you had two children, one of them, the bring was supposed to be done on Shabbat. One of them, the bring was supposed to be done on Sunday. You made a mistake and you do the bring for the one on Sunday on Shabbat. So you were just mechalel Shabbat. Because remember, bring is only pushed off on Shabbat. If the time is on Shabbat. But if the time is for Sunday, now you do the bring on Shabbat, it's on the seventh day, you're mechalel Shabbat. So you came and you're mechalel Shabbat. They made a mistake. So Rabbi Yoshua says, you're going to be patur from chatat. Why? Because since you were so busy in your mind that you wanted to make sure that you do the brit milah on the proper time, you're going to be patur. But to do it here, to do it, that you're getting married to a woman, Kevin Dismal, well, you have to get married today. Get married tomorrow. You don't want to get married tomorrow. Then they, well, you have to get married to her today. You don't have to get married to the woman today. There's no mitzvah that has to be today, not tomorrow, not the next day. Brit milah has to be done on the eighth day. So, okay, so your mind is preoccupied and it's all worried. What are you doing? You want to fulfill the mitzvah, not fulfill the mitzvah. You, so you want, okay, I have to do it now. So you can, you were all mevulbal, you were completely confused, and you didn't bring me out to the wrong child. Right? There were two, three, right? You're the mohan, you come, boom, you cut the wrong one. Right? So now, but here, right, it's actually a little bit different. Here, you know, it's not, it's not that Zaman is bahul, that you have to come and get married now. No, so he's going to come, he's going to say that you're going to be chayav, even according to Rabbi Yoshua. 
Okay? There's a Gemara. Vare, Truma. What about Truma? The mitzvah of eating of Truma ends Manol Bahur, meaning a Kohen, he doesn't have to eat Truma today. A Kohen could eat Truma whenever he wants. So the Zman is not Bahur. Remember, Zman is time. Bahur means Adam Bahur al is is it like all worried? He's like all, you know, mixed up. Rushed. Rushed. Thank you. Okay. And he says over there. So now what happens right now if he actually made a mistake? And what happened was is that the person came and he sinned by eating accidentally truma. And afterwards he realized that he wasn't allowed to eat it. So he says, Kapatar also of Yoshua was potato from the Keren and the Chomish. Remember that when you eat truma and you basically stole from the Kohen. Because truma belongs to the Kohen. So you have to pay back the Keren, which is a principal. Plus Chomish. Chomish is a fifth. So you have to add on a 20% on that which you ate. <laughs> so not only are you paying back the principal, principal plus 20%. So here he says, that if Yeshua says, you're going to be patur if you ate the truma. So he says, the tramas we learned in the Mishnah and Trumot, Chet, chet uh, Perek Chet, Mishnah Aleph, a Kohen that was eating truma, Imagine right now you have a Kohen. He's eating truma. And all of a sudden he found out that he's a Ben Grusham and Chalutza. Now we know that a Ben Grusham and Chalutza means the son of a divorced woman or the son of a woman that did Chalitza. He's considered a uh, Chazak Baruch. He's considered a Halal. A Halal does not eat Truma. A Halal is like a profaned Kohen. He does not get the, the, the does not do Birka Kohanim. He doesn't eat Truma. He doesn't do the service of Dash. He's a Halal. So he says over here, so now all of a sudden, right, what's going to happen? So Rabbi Yezir comes and he says, Mechayev. He's going to be Chayav Korba Akeren Vechomish. He has to pay back the principal and the fifth. Just like a stranger that comes and eats truma. Rabbi Yoshua says he's going to be patur. Now one second. Here you see that your person, Rabbi Yoshua says you're going to be patur even if it's not zman or bahul. Even if it's not like like a bring me on the eighth day that you have to do it right now. So even truma, that you can eat truma whenever you want, you're still going to be patur according to Rabbi Yoshua. So why did you tell me that according to Rabbi Yoshua you would be, you would be chayav in the case of the women? Right? Why? Because even though it's tabid var mitzvah, you made a mistake in doing a mitzvah, but you could have done it whenever you want. So therefore, since you're, you're not rushed, so therefore you should have thought about it more. You know, a woman, you don't want somebody else to grab. So says the Gemara, you see from here, right, that again, that this Kohen, his man is not Pahul, right? And therefore, there's going to be a problem. Answers the Gemara, Ha'it Marla, was stated, Mara Bevai Barabaye, Seve Bevai Barabaye, Ha'cha Betruma Be'erev Pesach Askina, and this Ah, look, we're Erev Pesach already. We're in the week of Erev Pesach. So he says, here we're talking about Truma of Chametz and instead of Pesach. So you're running to eat the Truma of Chametz in order not to be obeyed on the Yisur of Chametz. So because of that, Zmana is Bahul. You are rushed in doing it. And that's why Rabbi Yeshua says you're going to be patur from paying back the principal and the Chomesh. So until now, we just kept on saying that all of these, these prohibitions on the same woman, she's a married woman, she's the brother's wife, the wife's sister, and Anida, all these isunim, is because of the kolel, mosi, patachat. It's a general, it's adding on, it's in one shot. So therefore, the Mishnah to say that we're going according to the Benid. Rabbi, we have this somewhere else. you can answer. Isur batachat. We're talking about that all four isunim happen in one shot. Valiba de Rabbi Shimon. And according to Rabbi Shimon, that he argues on the concept of mosif, and kolel, which means even according to Rabbi Shimon, that he's mekel in Yisur Kolel Mosif, he admits that both of these surim could have happened in one shot, you're going to be chayat, which means like this. Remember, Yisur Mosif means you're adding something that was not there previously. What was the case of the adding? You remember? The mother-in-law. What was the case of the mother-in-law? Because you were adding serifa as well, right? You were adding them as like a stringency in the death penalty or a stringency in the punishment. That's called Mosif. Something which is not mosif is kolel. Kolel is general. For example, now she's a married woman. She's a married woman for everybody. That's a general prohibition. It's Shabbat. Shabbat is Shabbat for everybody, not only for you. That's a general prohibition. That's called kolel. Kolel is like a klal. Klal is a general rule. Klal, kolel. It's something general. So therefore, there was a machloket. Do you, are you going to be chayab when you add on an extra isur kolel or an isur mosif? So here he's saying, even according to the Bishimon, that you're not going to be chayav when you add on an isur kolel or an isur mosif. If it was done batachav, batachav means at the exact same moment, you are going to be chayav. So says the Gimana, 
I understand that you could find all three of these surim, the Shavinu Shaliach, the Shavuinu Shaliach, that the two brothers appointed a Shaliach to get married to the two sisters, and the two sisters appointed a Shaliach to receive, right, the, the Kiddushim. And then what happened is, is Upaga Shaliach be Shaliach. Yeah, so the Shaliach, right, was Paga be Shaliach, which means a brother, the, 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 the agents of the man, of the men, right, the, the two brothers, met the agents of the women, the two sisters, and they gave it at the exact same moment. So therefore the Kiddushin was Chala at the exact same moment. So now you have married women, Eshet Ach, the brother's wife, and Achot Ishto, which is the wife's sister, all three of them came in one exact moment. Okay? Ela Nidot, But how do you find Nida there? Meaning I could find the three in one shot with, with, uh, you call, with agents that they're sending a Shaliyah, right? And everything was done at the exact same time. It was the same Shaliyah. So imagine the same Shaliyah for both of them, the same Shaliyah for both. They come, they give it, perfect. But how do you become Nida? Well, they both become became Nida at the exact same second. Uh, it doesn't make sense. So he says, Amar Rav Amram Amram Rav, says Rav Amram 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 Rav, Kegon, Beshofot Mitoch Shosha Asar Lachar Shosha Asar. But we're talking about that what happened was, is that um, they, were, they were flowing blood, okay, Nida blood, from the last time of the Shnat Shlosha Sel Ledata Be'alim, until Knisat Shnat Arba Asre Shalahem. Okay, and therefore, Lechiyuve Ainhu, so it's going to be Mechayev, the, the men, in all the Yisurim in one moment, which means that when they come and they become Bar Mitzvah, right, which means that's when they're going to become Hayab, right? So he says, now the same thing could have been mitoch shnei masar, lachar shnei masar, right? Lechayev inhu, which means like this. The boys are from the 13th to after the 13th, which means they are coming to become, right, Hayavim in all the mitzvot, okay? So for them, they started the flow before Bar Mitzvah until after Bar Mitzvah. And for the women, before Bat Mitzvah to after Bat Mitzvah. So therefore, since the flow was going from before and after, they only became obligated in the Averot at the time of Bar Mitzvah. So at the time of Bar Mitzvah, you have also married women, also the brother's wife, also the, the wife's sister, and also Nida, all of them coming at the exact same moment. And the note tells exactly how it happens. So here you have it, for example, right? Rosh Hashanah, right? The two brothers, the twin brothers were born. And the next year, right? Um, twin sisters were born. So it comes out that also the brothers and also the sisters, they are going to come into Ol Mitzvot on the night of Rosh Hashanah. 13 years for the boys and 12 years for the girls. So therefore, Erev Rosh Hashanah, that year, the two brothers came and they gave to the two sisters money for Kiddushim, okay? And what happened was, in order that it should, thought of, it should actually come into place the next day, because again, they're still before Rosh Hashanah, so it's not going to chal. So they had to give the money and it's going to fall chal the next day, okay? When everyone was going to be, so now what happens is, when a time, the, the sisters, right, they become, they started seeing blood before Rosh Hashanah, and they continue going until after Rosh Hashanah comes in. And therefore, in that case, all four of the Yisurim happened at the exact same moment. Yes, okay, so now we're by the two dots on the bottom of Lamadalim Mudalim. Mafrishino Tam. So we said, what do you do? You separate now after this case happened, right? This very interesting case, you have to separate them from their husbands for three months to make sure whether they were pregnant or not. So says the Gimana, Gaini Shamita Bene, Riyadi Shuna, one second. Why do you do you have to separate them? A woman doesn't become pregnant from the first pregnancy, from the first relations, meaning that if a woman cannot become pregnant from the first relations, so therefore, why in the world are you going to separate them to see if she's pregnant or not? So, no, they had the relations in the same night twice. So for since they had it twice, right? So therefore, you do have the problem. By the way, this actually happened, if you remember, with Yehuda and Tamar, right? There's a whole question there. Rashi, Rashi. What? So now Rabbi Chia comes and he says that there's going to be 16 chataot. Okay? So he says, He says, one second. How did you get 16 chataot? Okay? You got 16 chataot 
he says in Ara 36. We did it twice, we just doubled it. Exactly. So therefore he comes and he says, there's going to be four Yisurim, and therefore they have to bring four Kobanot. So for everybody, right? So then now both of together four. to bring eight, and then you have the women as well. Right? So now he comes and he says, so that's going to be 16 Chatao. So then he comes and he says, so now it's going to be Tlatim Vitartim. It's going to be 36 now. So I'm 32. going to be, uh, th- sorry, 32. Right? Tlatim Vitartim. Why? But he says, because now you're doubling it. So says, and according to you, reasoning, do you know that according to Shittat Rabbi Yezet, a person is going to be chayav on every single, um, how do you say action? in English? Yeah, every action, but it's, a, it's a, every insertion. Meaning every single time that he pushes in, every time that he goes, that in itself is also going to be chayav another one. That means every single time that he that he he inserts in, right, or he moves himself in, that in itself is another isul. So two by so there's going to be much more then. Rather, we were only talking about the first koach, yeah. and we weren't talking about anything else. Hachanami, so to hear, the biyadi shonak kachashi, the one we're talking about, the first koach, meaning that even though according to Shittat Rabbi Yezir, on every single time that you go in and out, right, that you're doing this motion, you're going to be chayav another chatat, we're only talking about the first koach. We're not talking about all the other kochot, right, that we weren't going there. You understand? That's what the Gemara is actually answering. So Amalei Rabbi Lerav Nachman says, Rabbi, to Rav Nachman, we just said that a betula, that a virgin, does not become pregnant from the first, right, uh, pre- from the first relations. Right, 34b. Says the Gemara, Tamar That's why I told you, Yudan Tamar. Tamar, right, she became pregnant on the first Biyah. Why? Because if you remember, Yehuda, he gave his son first, Er, uh, first uh, he gave Er, and then Onan, and then it was Shelah, right? So Er was given to Tamar, and he didn't actually have relations with her. Some people say that he actually spilled seeds. Some people say that he was only through the vine, the, the, the back part, right? Oh, so therefore, he comes and he says that she was she was still a virgin, right? The same thing with right with with Tamar. So Amalei says the Gemara, Tamar be'etz b'ma'acha. Tamar took out her virginity before the relations, right? She took it out with her finger, right? Why? Because since she was already open, so therefore it was considered already like a biashnia. Right, like a second relations, and therefore she become, become pregnant. The Amar of Yitzchak says of Yitzchak, Kol Moachot Shel Bet Rebbe, all the Kalot of the family of Rebbe would do this before their the, before their marriage. Tamar Sheman, right? So they were like Tamar, meaning not that the Mamash their names were. But Lama Nikash, why were they called Tamar? Hashem Tamar Shema Chavetzvah, not because their names were actually Tamar, right? Not all the daughter in laws and everything of the, not all these uh, Kalot were were what's it called were Tamar, but rather just because they did an action of Tamar. That they used to take it out. It says over here that these Nashim Tzadkaniot of Bet Rebbe would come and they would send them far away, right, um, to learn right. Torah right after the marriage. So in order that they should be able to become pregnant very quickly, they used to take out their their hymen in order before getting married in order to do that. Now since they were doing it Lashem Shamayim, right, and they were doing it like for just like Tamar, they were called Tamars, okay, because they did this, okay. So that's the Gemara. One second, but they were, but she was already married to Erve Onan. So answers the Gemara. Erve Onan shimshu shilokadarkan. They had relations through the back, the back part. They didn't have it through the front, and therefore, since they only had relations through the to the back, she was still considered a virgin in the fact that she could not become pregnant. Okay. So ask the Gemara now. Meitve, we're going to ask a question. All the twenty-four months that a woman is feeding, she's nursing. A person could start having relations like normal, but then afterwards he's going to take out the, the seed outside of the body in order that she shouldn't become pregnant. Because if she becomes pregnant, she won't be able to continue feeding, right? And then the child might die. These are the words of Rabbi Yezid. Amrulo, they went and they said, Halalu enuela He says, no, if people do such a thing, that they're going to be mashchit their zera, they're going to destroy their semen, they'll spill their seed. They are doing an action of erve onan, which a close who hates. And therefore, he has to finish normally. I mean, a shamay mina chamu. In a shamay, they should have mercy on him, but they shouldn't come to sakana. So you see from here that Erve Onan, they did have, right, relations with Tamar, but they just spilled their seed outside. Well, I didn't know because that. it says over here that they did the, the action like Erve Onan. And Erve Onan, it's Nashva. That means that they did do relations normally, but they spilled their seed outside. So the answer is the Gemara, no. Kema'aser ve'onan, one second. Kema'aser ve'onan, ve'onan. It's like Erve Onan and not like Erve Onan. Just like Maaser Onan, because we're talking about they're being Mashrit, they're Zera, they're destroying their seed. If people says, 
right? That when he came to the wife of his, his brother's wife and he destroyed the land, they did it and here it was done I understand Onan that he was Mashita Zera Dikhtiv Bey it's written in the Shikhet Arza Ela Er Menalam how do you know the Er did the same thing Amar Nachman Yitzchak Dikhtiv says in Pasuk Vayame Gamoto he killed them also Hashem killed them because he did bad in the eyes of Hashem Afu Beotam Itamet he died in the same penalty why because of the same sin of Hashchata Zera of uh, destroying a seed Bishlama Mishum Lo Lo Yez Lo Zara I understood that Onan he did so because Right, it says over here that the child that came from Tamar was going to come because of his brother, not from him. But Er, my Tamarachi. Why did Er? Er was the first brother. He was the Bechor. He got married to Tamar. Why didn't he get? You know, he already got married to a beautiful woman. Have children with her. Says the Gemara, "Kedei sheloti taber v'yachish yofia." When a woman becomes pregnant, her beauty goes away. Right. So since her beauty goes away. So therefore, he didn't want her to become less beautiful. She was so beautiful. He didn't want her to become less beautiful. And therefore, that's why he spilled the seed in order that she should not become pregnant. Okay? Fine. Next, to do with Biyari Shona. It's the first relations. Tanur Rabbanam, we learned in Abraita. When it says in the Pasuk, Which parasha was that in? The Torah. We just read it yesterday. We just read it yesterday. Yeah, look at me in the Shemaim. We just read this yesterday, Richard, in the parasha. Yes, yes. Yeah, incredible. What does it mean, Otah? Right? What does that mean? That she does not need to be la to permit herself from Tum'ah. That means basically a kala does not need to go to the mikveh to permit herself. These are the words of Yehuda. Chachamim omrim, prat shaloka daka. He says, no, that's shaloka darka. Which means a kala does need, right? He's arguing on, on Rabbi Yehuda. Chachamim say that a kala does need a tevila, just like any woman. So a kala also needs a uh, tevila also, right? When she goes, when she has the relations the first time. But if it's through the back, she does not need to do tevila. Okay, that's what he's saying. Amalei hon bered Rav Nachman le Rav Nachman. Says hon, the son of Rav Nachman to Rav Nachman. Leima kasab Rabbi Yehuda, Torah chasal tashite kala. Are you going to tell me now that the Torah is going to be uh, it's going to be chasa, it's going to have mercy on the Tachshite Kala? Because remember, they come and they put a lot of makeup. and they, So therefore, the Kilu said that she doesn't need to have a Tevila. She doesn't have to go to the mercy of the Mikveh in order that she doesn't have to take off all her makeup and jewelry and all these things. Amalei says, no. A woman does not become pregnant from the first Bia. So since it said, this Bia is not fit, fitting for Lazria, and to have children. So because of that, that's why she doesn't have to go to the mikveh. So says the Gimana, but my kami pergi, what is a machloka between Rabbanan and Yehuda? Says Rabbanan, savre shikvat zara, prat lara. This comes to exclude hara. Hara means that it's only the beginning of relations. And he only inserts only a little bit. And therefore, right, there was no hazra, there was no semen that came out. Ota, prat shaloka darka. Ota means her, it's shaloka darka because it's the normal way, not the abnormal way. Right, which is through the anal, right? But Rabbi Yehuda, Savar Rabbi Yehuda holds Shelod the Kedarka Varami Shichvat Zera. Because they both come out from Shichvat Zera. Okay, that's whether it's coming to exclude. And the word Ota is Prat Lekala. It's coming to exclude a Kala that she does not uh, need to go to the mikveh. Okay, Kiata Ravin when Ravin came from Belter, it's said Amar Rabbi Yochanan said the name of Yochanan. Kol she Shahata leachar bala eser shanim when he said Shuv Ena Yoledet. If a woman comes. And she waited 10 years after the husband's death. And then she gets married. She will not be able to become pregnant and give birth again. So therefore, he says over here, if somebody did not fulfill, he's not allowed to get married to this woman. Because she's like an akaran, a zikina. Meaning, let's say a person never fulfilled procreation. He never did the mitzvah, procreating. So for he cannot get married to a woman that's an almana, that she was 10 years without getting married. So let's say a, a woman, young woman, 20 year old, 20 year old, she came and she got divorced. Yeah, or not divorced, sorry. The husband died. So the husband dies and now she waited 10 years and only at the age of 30 does she want to get married. So somebody that already had children cannot get married. To, sorry, that did not have children, cannot get married to her. Why? Because now she won't have children because once she waited 10 years afterwards, she does not give birth. So says the Gimana, Amen of Nachman, says of Nachman, Lo shanu ela she'en datal that's only if that throughout the entire 10 years, she never wanted to get married. 
אבל דתה לי נעשה בלב, שהיא רוצה להיות מרעית, היא תאבדת. שהיא יכולה להיות מרעית, even after the 10 years. Right? He says over here, because it all has to do with her mindset, which is incredible. Right? That means basically you're coming and you're seeing that the, the psychology, the mindset is going to change everything in, the, in her human nature, which is the, here you're seeing it. You're much seeing this. Something incredible. Okay? Fine. Next. Amala, Rava, Lebat. Sorry. Amala, Rava, Lebat, Rav Chasta. So it says over here, okay, this is, right? We, we say Chasta, Sfaradim. So Amal Rav Lebat Rav Chasta. So said Rava to the daughter of Rav Chasta, right? That's why he says Amal Allah, it's to her. So Rava is coming and he's saying to the daughter of Rav Chasta. Now he got married to her after 10 years from the death of the first husband of Rabbi Merchama. So he said the rabbis are speaking against you, that how are you going to have children? She told him, Ana date Allah she says, what are you talking about? All those years, I wanted to get married. Right? I wanted to get married to you. So don't worry about it. So basically the Gemara there in Babatra, yeah, the Gemara in Babatra is talking about the once, right? Shepamachat, when they were very young, right? When she was very young, she, the daughter of Chasta was sitting in the lap of her father, right? And he had two children, two, two students in front of him, Rava and Rabbi Barchama. So Rav Chasta comes and he tells, right? His young daughter, which one of my two students you want to get married to? So she went and she answered both of them. One guy jumped yeah? and said me first. So he said, once it came out of her mouth, right, it went and it actually was fulfilled. And therefore first, Rabbi Barachama got married to her. And then after when he died, so then Rava came and he got married to her. Okay, so he says, since Rava was already married, right, to another woman at the time when Rabbi Barachama was, was, uh, was uh, he passed away, and also for many years afterwards, the second marriage was only Right? It didn't happen immediately afterwards. It happened many years later. And still, the daughter of Chasta was always looking forward to get married to him. So therefore, she was able this to get married. wanted to married. live longer. That's why he wanted to be second. So now, what happened was, is says the Gemara, Hai de atyad le commander of Yosef. There was a woman that came in front of Yosef. Amrallah, she said, Ana shaiti achar bali shanim. I waited for 10 years. Biyalati. So you see a woman, she comes and she says, what? I waited 10 years after the death of the husband, and I became pregnant, and I gave birth. Amalai says, Biti, al totzi laz al divrei chachamim. Right? He says, don't come and be motzi laz, right? On divrei chachamim, tell the truth. So Amalai, she said, you're right. Lenochri nivalti. She had relations with a goy when she was, uh, when she was still in Almana. So the fact that she had relations with a goy during that time, so therefore, right, it, it, uh, it does not, uh, it's, so we're talking about that she didn't have relations for 10 years. If she didn't have relations for 10 years and she didn't want to get married for the 10 years, then no, but if she had relations even once, and here it says she, she had relations with a boy, that's it. So then she could still become pregnant. So when she comes and she says that, he went and he told her straight point blank, tell the truth. Don't be most laws on the words of the rabbis. He says, you're right. She had relations with a boy. Amar Shmuel, Shmuel says, the Quran, all the women that they had relations and they want to get married to somebody else, they always have to wait three months, except for a giyoret ktana, a giyoret, which is a minor, right? A woman that converted, which is a minor, or Shivcha Ketanit, that she's a Ketana. Okay? Says the Gemara, Aval Ketana Bat Yisrael, Tzichah Lamtin, Shosha Chodashim. Says what? That means only a Ketana that's a Goya, that converted, or Shivcha, she doesn't need three months because she cannot be pregnant? What? In a, in a Bat Yisrael, yes? Or am I? But why? Right? So he says, Im B'miyun, if she did Miyun, that she came and she renounced the marriage. Remember, how do you do Miyun? When the brother or the mother got her married, when she was minor. And then she does Miyun. Rabbanan. So he says, Rabbi Shmuel, the lo baya. What are you talking about? The nektana does not need three months. Mei beget. If you're going to tell me that she got a get, Hamra Shmuel Chadash Shmuel already said it. Rabbi Shmuel, miyana boy, and it's chalam tishola. If if she if he did she did miyun, she doesn't need three months. But if he gave her a get, she does need three yeah, months. Give me outside. Ella, but what are we dealing with? Biznut. We're talking about a nektana that she had relations with biznut, and now she wants to get married. In such a case, she has to wait three months. Okay, we continue with Zat Hashem tomorrow.